If you are watching this now in the 21st century and you've read at least one self-help book in your life, then you probably know that according to folk wisdom, no matter what kind of bad stuff happened in your life, whether you have problems in your relationships or you've been hit by a bus, the core reason why everything in your life goes wrong is plain and simple. You don't love yourself. And if you don't love yourself, you'll never be able to love anybody else. So please show yourself some love and buy this product because you're worth it. There is so much confusion about what it means to truly love yourself, especially if it means treating yourself to another cashmere sweater, that some people go to the other extreme and they are highly suspicious of the term. Especially in church circles, when you mention self-love, some people have this allergic reaction like, Oh no, the religion of me! Pure selfishness under disguise! I guess both these camps are right to a certain degree. Because obviously there are people who really take to heart that principle that if you don't love yourself you won't be able to love other people. But the problem is that they get so focused on meeting their own needs that they never actually get to that part when they start loving other people. <laughs> because, hey, there are only 24 hours in a day. But self-love doesn't have to mean best quality food, massages or getting all your needs met, although sometimes it does. It can also mean discipline or denying yourself something that you want but you know is bad for you or telling somebody that they hurt you. It's also self-love and self-respect. We often hear that we should die to self. But what does it really mean? What does it mean in practice? Unfortunately, from my own life experience and from what I see around me, in this respect, we often take the approach of a hitman, a serial killer who's been hired to kill a particular person, but he doesn't know what the victim looks like. So he says to himself, hmm, how do I solve this problem? I know, I'm just going to keep shooting at everything that moves until everybody and everything is dead. Ta-da! By the same token, we can be so suspicious of every manifestation of life that we see in ourselves that we can kill both the bad and the good inclinations and we end up dead inside. And with that inner deadness, we pretend to love God and other people and we spiritualize that deadness as a form of higher living while secretly envying those who are able to enjoy their lives. Is there a third way? Obviously, that's a rhetorical question. This Sunday we are meditating Matthew 22, verses 34 to 40. Hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. One of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. The first commandment might seem abstract. How can you put your whole heart, your whole soul and your whole mind into loving somebody you've never seen? But the answer can be found in 1 John 4 20. Whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. Hence the second commandment, love your neighbor as yourself. This is very difficult, but it's also very liberating. Because there are people who behave like doormats and they put other people on pedestal, not because they love them, but because they are afraid to say no. They are afraid that if they show their own individuality, they will be abandoned. And others think that just because somebody hurt them in the past, they have the right to put themselves first from now on and disregard the needs of other people. So if you feel confused by these two alternatives, imagine a world where you have an argument with your friend and instead of trying to determine who has won, you try to determine the truth. Because you are both equal and the truth is above. Imagine a world where you are not judged on the basis of your status, your wealth or any prejudices that people may have against you, but only on the basis of your actions. Because we are all equal and justice is above. And imagine a world 
Well, you don't have to be pretty, perfect, smart, always happy, always agreeable, never having problems with anything to be loved. Because we are all equal and love is above. So we don't have to choose whether to focus on ourselves or on other people as long as we focus on love. If that's what you would like to focus on, please join me this Sunday, 10 p.m. Central European time on this channel. We are going to walk in other people's shoes and see what love's got to do with it. See you.